Welcome to the NPTEL MOOCs course on Phonetics and Phonology, a broad overview. Today we will move to our next section that is Unit 2, Acoustic Phonetics. Before that, let us quickly recap what happened in the last few classes. In Unit 1, we had a brief overview of phonetics and phonology. After that, we looked into the various aspects of articulatory phonology, production of consonants and production of vowels. In the overview of phonetics and phonology, we went through some basic terms like phoneme as a unit of abstract representation and then also other units like phone and allophones. And then we saw how phonetics deals with the physical manifestation of sounds. So, for instance, in articulatory phonetics, which we uh, went through in the second two sessions, we saw that uh, production of consonants and production of vowels involves a different uh, vocal tract mechanism for the production of vowels is always uh, a free airflow, for the production of consonants there is always an obstruction inside the vocal tract. In the last class, we looked at how vowels are produced and as I have just mentioned it was with the free air flow and then we looked at vowel distinctions and we looked at the vowels of English mainly and we saw how we can divide the vowel inventories of different languages into uh, certain categories depending on where the tongue is and where the narrowness occurs inside the mouth and whether the lips are rounded or unrounded. With uh, articulatory phonetics, we have um, looked at the basic aspects of this part of your course. And then now we move on to acoustic phonetics. So, when we study acoustic phonetics, we study the physical, again the physical properties of how sounds are produced, the acoustics of these properties. So, what happens when sound is produced? Sound is nothing but variation in air pressure and it is air pressure which is detectable by the human ear. So, a uh, variation in air pressure which is which the uh, human air can detect and that is which reaches the hearer, hearer's ear as a sound, as a speech sound produced by another person. So, uh, sound waves are characterized by transmission of energy and this transmission of energy happens in the form of compression and rarefaction through a medium. So, a uh, sound wave, so as we just saw that it is variation in air pressure which must be detectable by the human ear and that is the result of a transmission of energy. So, the, the way that uh, it will be detected by human ear is a transmission of energy which happens in the form of compression and rarefaction which, which will require a medium. So, sound is a form of a traveling air fluctuation. So, this compression and rarefaction can be imagined as a traveling air uh, fluctuation. So, what type of a wave is a sound wave? So, there are two types of waves, mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves and sound waves are mechanical waves. Sound waves are mechanical waves because they need a medium which we just talked about, a medium for the traveling of that fluctuation of the air, a medium is required and that medium is air. And, uh, Sound waves therefore rely on the availability of movement of particles. So, the movement of particles is extremely important for sound to be heard by a human ear. And um, 
Unlike mechanical waves like air, there are other kinds of waves like electromagnetic waves which have their own medium. For instance, photons in the case of light. However, if there is no medium, there will be no sound. So, this is the compression and rarefaction that we talked about, compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction, compression. This is the fluctuation on which the air, the traveling of air depends on. So, we will now study what is a period, what is amplitude and what is the relationship between time and all these other things. So, uh, when we study sound waves, we have to understand how sound waves are different from other types of waves. We just now saw that sound waves require medium and that is why it is a mechanical wave which is different from an electromagnetic wave. Now, there are other kinds of waves like transverse waves versus longitudinal waves. So, what are transverse waves? waves in which the direction of propagation of, of the direction of particle movement is, it is at a right angle to the direction of wave propagation. So, the, the movement is at a right angle and let us see an example of uh, something similar to a wave created on water. So, when you throw a pebble on water, you have a transverse wave and it is something like this. So, it is the movement is at right angle to the direction of the propagation of the wave. So, when you throw a pebble into the water, you see ripples created in the water. That is a transverse wave. Are sound waves like that? No. Sound waves are longitudinal. So, what happens in sound waves is not the what we just saw 90 degree the wave the movement particle movement at 90 degrees to the propagation of the wave. Here the particles move back and forth back and forth along the line of the traveling wave. So, sound waves are longitudinal waves. Now, let us see an example of what we mean by back and forth. So, once I stop, you will see that, um, let us look at this again. We will see that, suppose these, uh, we have a, a player here and we have sound coming out of that player. What is happening here? So, what is happening is that there is a transmission of energy and the transmission is in of energy is happening through the movement of back and forth, which means the particles move and again come back to the original position. So, look at this closely again. So, they move and come back and move and then it sets the other particles into movement and again come back. So, now uh, when that happens, you have a compression and a rarefaction where a place of high energy and a place of low energy, place of high energy, low energy which keeps transmitting the energy so that the sound wave travels along that line of movement. So, when the air particles are stationary, there is no vibration, there is no propagation of sound. Unlike here, when you have a compression and a rarefaction, the compression high energy moves forward and then creates energy and comes back to its original position and then you have these positions, the, you have these places of high energy and low energy as a result of which the, the sound wave can travel. Now, let us study the properties of sound waves. We have learnt a couple of things that sound wave is characterized by transmission of energy in the form of compression and rarefaction. So, high energy, low energy and movement of back and forth, back and forth as a result of which the wave will be moving along the line of its propagation. So, 
um, therefore relying absolutely on the movement of particles, air particles. When there is no movement of air particles, then there is no sound. Having learnt that, let us look at the properties of these compressions and rarefaction, which leads to the special characteristics of the sound wave. So, uh, as you saw that the movement of the air particles is represented in a uniform sort of a uh, cycle on a plane. So, that cycle is called the period. The period is a time taken to complete one cycle. So, um, a period is measured in seconds and its fractions. So, the time taken to complete one cycle is called the period. So, the other important, very important term while learning about sound waves is frequency. Frequency is the number of cycles completed in one second, cycles per second. It's frequency period is a time taken to complete the cycle. So, period is about the time and frequency is the number of cycles completed in one second. So, frequency is measured in cycles per second, the unit of measurement of frequency is called hertz. So, human ear can pick up frequencies in the range of 20 to 20,000. There may be variations depending on your age and uh, other and if you have ailments. So, you might your hearing range must may be different. So, some people have a higher hearing range, some can hear as low as 20 hertz while others may not, uh, but generally uh, it is uh, as low as 20 hertz can be picked up by the human ear and as high as 20,000 hertz. Frequency, which we just talked about, cycles per second. So, number of cycles completed in a second, that is heard in psychoacoustic terms. Perceptually, we hear that in terms of pitch. So, when we hear a low pitch and when we hear a high pitch, we normally hear the differences between the pitch. And it is a psycho acoustic correlate of frequency is pitch. And the relation between frequency and period is uh, frequency is equal to 1 by the period that is the time taken to complete and um, to complete a cycle and away with a period of 1 by hundredth of a second has a frequency of 100 hertz. So, that is the equation. The other important term that one would have to know while studying sound waves is that of amplitude. Uh, amplitude is also called the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. So, what is the maximum displacement, it is a maximum variation in terms of sound, it is it is called the maximum variation in air pressure from normal atmospheric pressure. So, um, amplitude is connected to loudness. So, the variation in terms of the air pressure from the normal atmospheric pressure that would be your amplitude, you would hear it in terms of loudness just the way frequency uh, perceptually is pitch, the uh, perceptual correlate of amplitude is loudness. So, when amplitude decreases, the sound becomes less loud. Two waves can have the same frequency, but different amplitudes and vice versa. The standard speed of sound is around 330 meters per second and it is the velocity of the sound of air. Anything which is above that velocity is called supersonic. So, the other important aspect of 
sound is that depending on the medium, so we learned this very early in the lecture that sound will always need a medium. And the depending on the medium, the speed of sound will vary. So depending whether it's solids can also have their uh, frequency, for instance, uh, this table or this pen, they might all have different frequencies and gas, uh, liquid in water also sound can travel, but the speed of sound will be different. So, uh, we learnt a bit about sound waves, that they are mechanical, that they are longitudinal and uh, now we are studying how we are looking at the characteristics of the sound wave. And you have just seen that there is uh, something called frequency which is just with the time taken to complete one cycle, the cycle of compression and rarefaction that we first talked about based on which uh, the sound is perpetrated, based on which the air fluctuation which happens in terms of compression and rarefaction and, and the properties therefore are such that a sound can have very um, very typical properties. So, let us see what, what would be a typical property, what would be um, the property of human sounds, speech sounds and what are the other types of sounds which we encounter and th that will all depend on the sound wave, the compression and the rarefaction. So, one type of sound wave need not necessarily be a human speech sound is a simple wave or is called a sinusoidal or sine wave. Now, sinusoidal waves have a simple harmonic motion. So, what does it mean to have a simple harmonic motion? It means that there is just one frequency component. Remember, we talked about 100 hertz. Um, that is the, the when you talked about the relationship between frequency and period. So, if a sound has just one frequency component of 100 hertz or just one frequency component of 200 hertz, so that will be your sinusoidal wave. So, just one frequency component, just a simple harmonic motion. And now, what is a sinusoidal wave? each cycle of the movement takes the same time. So, one cycle of compression rarefaction will take the and each cycle like that will take the same time. So, it is represented as a uniform circular motion on a plane and these are also called a sine wave and a cycle. Let us see an example of a um, 100 hertz wave that we try to generate. Yeah. So, it is uh, difficult to stop at the exact uh, point where the compression and the rarefaction ends. So, this would be your one cycle, a simple sine, sine wave. Now, if you have another one, Yes, this would be your simple sine wave, two cycles here, one compression, one rarefaction, another compression, another rarefaction, two sine waves and both the cycles take exactly the same amount of time. So, this is a simple sine wave. So, if we have um, two sine waves with identical frequency, an amplitude, we would just have a louder sound and we would not have a complex sine wave. So, if we add a sine wave to the same frequency, we have greater amplitude and the addition of sine waves of different frequencies, we have a complex wave. So, we will study complex waves more when we study human speech sounds, as human speech sounds are almost always complex waves and the way they are studied are as 
as sum of constituent sine waves. So, they are decomposed into their constituent sine waves. So, remember that each wave has a frequency component. We saw the sinusoidal wave where each cycle takes the equal amount of time. Now, if you combine frequency components, various frequency components, you would get your complex waves instead of a sine wave. So, Fourier analysis is a mathematical technique where the, um, the complex waves are decomposed into their component sine waves. So, that is how we get a sound spectrum of human speech sounds. Now, this is what a uh, complex periodic wave would look like. So, here is a period complex periodic wave composed of a 100 hertz sine wave and a 1000 hertz sine wave and you can see that it is not like the uniform circular movement that you saw before. It has two component waves and it is shown by the sort of jagged line here that there are two component waves here. However, the two component waves will finish the cycle at the same time and again the cycle starts will finish. So, that is how you have complex waves. How are these um, different aspects of a sound wave, how are they represented in a graph? You have seen that in the horizontal axis, we have the frequency. In the vertical axis, we have the amplitude. And um, sine waves are not very difficult to deal with mathematically and the representation of complex functions as sine waves often make analysis less difficult. And we will see that when we look at the, the component waves in human speech sounds like that of vowels. So, periodicity is very important even when we study human speech sounds also. Periodic waves have a pattern that repeat itself at regular intervals. So, for any human sound to be periodic, this characteristic must be there that the pattern must repeat itself at regular intervals. Additionally, there are quasi periodic waves that may not be quite regular or not wholly repeating. So, human speech sounds may be quasi periodic also. Let us again look at um, sound waves, how you can have a 100 hertz. You can see that moves very fast. Here is a 200 hertz with an amplitude of 0.5. So, uh, if you have all these, this is 300 and this is 400 hertz. Now, if all these are component waves in a complex wave, then you can imagine why the complex wave looks the way it does. Coming back to aperiodic waves, uh, aperiodic waves do not have a regular repeating pattern and are perceived as noises. And they do not have a harmonic basis either and um, they do not have a, a relationship between the component frequencies. And the component frequencies are not integer multiples of their fundamental frequency which is the characteristic of harmonic sound patterns. Even there you can have a, even among aperiodic waves you can have two types one which is continuous versus one which is transient. So, even with in sound which is noisy you can have two types one which is continuous and transient. So, so continuous waves also can have random patterns, but there is a continuity. So, white noise is an example of aperiodic noise characterized by absolute random pressure variations. So, some sounds are your typical continuous aperiodic waves. So, you have uh, for instance when you say shh or a hissing sound or a whisper, these are all continuous aperiodic sounds. They do not have a harmonic structure, so but Fourier analysis is possible on them. 
Again transient sounds are sudden pressure fluctuations, sudden noises are transient sounds. This is your white noise. As we just said, white noise is a aperiodic continuous sound. Now, as when we talked about periodicity, we talked about quasi periodic sounds. What are quasi periodic sounds? So, the frequency components of a complex periodic wave are called harmonics. So, suppose there is a frequency, there will be multiples of that frequency which are called harmonics, and these are always integer multiples of what we have the most fundamental of those frequencies called the fundamental frequency. And then above the fundamental frequency there are higher harmonics which are called overtones and which are integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. So, vowel sounds are typically like this and there is always fundamental frequency and then there are among these harmonics a uh, few of the strong ones stand out and these are called formants and this is how we understand vowels in acoustic phonetics. The harmonics which have the most energy are the ones which stand out in the characterization of vowels and these are called formants and we will study in the next class. While uh, talking about sound waves and also because we just now talked about vowels, something very important which will have to be mentioned is that of resonators and filters. So, um, we talked about how sound needs a medium and for the transmission of energy. So, it is a travelling air fluctuation, travelling air fluctuation. And then, so um, when the air particle moves, there are, there is always some resonator which sort of attenuates, sort of weakens or increases the properties of that sound. So, the apart from the medium you also have resonators. So, for instance, in the production of speech sounds we have the vocal cavity. So, that will be your resonator and that is an apart from the air which is pushed out from the lungs which is uh, given various uh, shape by the vocal tract. Now, the vocal tract itself is a, like a resonating chamber which gives particular uh, characteristics to the sounds that are uh, produced. So, each of these uh, resonators are tuned to specific frequencies. So, the natural frequency, the frequency at which a particular object prefers to vibrate. For instance, this wooden disc would like to has a certain frequency, it has a natural frequency. It prefers to the sound that you hear as I slightly likely tap on it is the natural frequency of this wooden table. So, when the frequency of the external force is near to the natural frequency of the vibrating system, you have what is called resonance. So, the both must come together which means the frequency of the external force, the driving force and that of the uh, resonating system, there must be a match between the two and then you have what is called the resonance. So, the result of this is that the amplitude of vibration increases at natural frequencies. So, it works as a resonator. So, they are attenuated or in, so either so there is modification of the amplitudes at other frequencies. So, the system functions as a modifier or a filter. So, sound is studied as a source filter system which we will talk about in the following classes on acoustic phonetics.
Resonators and filters. Filtering of a complex sound uh, is a process of uh, selection. Some frequencies are allowed to pass through while others are blocked. So, some frequencies are preferred over some other frequencies. So, that is the purpose of a, of a filtering system of a resonator. And there are different kinds of filters. So, there can be a low pass filter which permits only frequency components below a specified frequency. There can be high pass which permits only frequency above a certain cutoff and then a band pass which is a combination of both the low pass and the high pass and allows a band pass filters by center frequency and bandwidth and the range of frequencies passed by the filter which are not more than 3 decibels. So, the bandwidth of a filter may be relatively narrow or broad. So, this is a band pass filter and this could be anything. So, when you tune into the radio, so they, ha they have band passes and, and frequencies at various hertz are allowed to pass through. So, you can have, you can have various types of filters. So, the human speech system also acts like a certain kind of a resonator and a filter and this is just to give you an example of how a filter may allow only for instance certain uh, from 300 to 400 hertz and then you can have um, something which is center frequency and then a bandwidth. So, whereas you can have sounds allowed in that bandwidth all the way from around 200 to 1200 or 1300 and then but the center frequency which is uh, the central one and then a bandwidth along which various other frequencies can be allowed. So, um, we have come to the end of today's lecture and we have learnt how speech sounds can be studied in acoustic phonetics how sound is variation in air pressure and air pressure which is detectable by the human ear and then sound wave is transmission of energy it's, it's through compression and rarefaction through a, a medium. And sound waves are mechanical waves because they require a medium and mostly that medium is air and uh, the compression and rarefaction can be seen in um, the way particles move back and forth in this longitudinal wave traveling that we showed you how they move back and forth and how energy uh, sound wave is created by that energy and then the compressions and rarefactions as a result of that air fluctuation is how we hear sound. And then the properties of sound waves the period is the time needed to complete one cycle and the frequency is the number of cycles per second. These are very important terms while studying sound waves and then amplitude which is the maximum displacement uh, from the normal atmospheric pressure and then uh, amplitude is connected to loudness, frequency is connected to pitch and then uh, we also studied how uh, sounds there could be sinusoidal waves where sinusoidal waves are simple harmonic motion which has just one frequency component suppose 100 hertz or only 200 hertz. So, which means each cycle is completed in a second. So, um, addition of sine waves of different frequencies leads to a complex wave and we can have an infinite variety of complex waves and depending on its component waves which could be decomposed into their sine waves which is Fourier's theorem and this is how complex waves look like. So, uh, also we studied how periodic waves uh, repeat themselves and we saw various types of periodic waves and we studied a bit about aperiodic waves also how they could be continuous and transverse. So, uh, like a hissing sound or a whisper can be a continuous transverse sound unlike a big thud or a hammer uh, which could be a transverse 
a periodic sound and we saw that women vowel sounds are quasi periodic there are many frequency components in the complex waves that are produced as a result of uh, the production of vowels and we also studied a bit about resonators and filters and how the natural frequency of the resonator um, if it matches the driving force then that may be highlighted that may have more energy that resonance and in human vowel sounds those are called the formants. So, the there could be a, the resonator and filter can modify the air the air that is passing through and the modifying and filtering can be of um, uh, of allowing certain frequencies to pass through and not allowing certain frequencies certain higher frequencies pass through passes through some filters certain lower frequencies pass through some filters and then you have band pass filters which allows certain bandwidths and with that we come to this to the end of our first lecture on acoustic phonetics thank you very much for listening